another installment of Running with the Wolves promotion. And today, my special guest is local Hudson Valley heavyweights, post hardcore metaphor band, Asana. How are you guys doing? There we go. What's up, bro? How are you guys doing? You got Bob yeah, in the house. How you doing, man? <laughs> How's COVID treating you guys? Great, man. As you can see, we're all wearing our masks. <laughs> we live together, so it doesn't Yeah, matter. I'm pretty sure this guy over here on the right doesn't have anything to worry about. I mean, I brought a mask. I'm a small Yeah, he's good. <laughs> um, so introduce yourself. Like, who plays what in the band? You want to go first? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Boba Fett. I play the skin food. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, huh? How long have you been playing? Uh, you know, puberty. <laughs> hey, dude. All right. All right. All right. There we go. Oh, uh, there he is. He, okay, he's so here's his true identity. Out. All right. There's an ugly face under that mask. <laughs> What's up? What's up, man? How are you doing? All right. So I'm Vinny. I'm the vocalist. What's up, Bob? Man? <laughs> no, he doesn't smell bad. All right. Yeah, uh, Kevin Guitar. Yeah. What's up? Slim Shady over there in the middle? Or what do you play in the band? Stan. Don't give him that shady pop. Okay, no, he's he's a stand. Stand. Mixed with MGK and Eminem. That's what's up. Yeah. Terrible combination, but that's what's up. I feel you. Yeah, yeah. Right. He, he copied me in the For my inception. That's the way he was. I'm the boards. He was camp on. He was like a blizzard. He was like a blizzard. Yeah. yeah, true. So, um, how did you guys come about? Um. Uh, well, um, a lot of us have gone, uh, well, at least me and Andrew, we've known each other for, uh, for the better half of almost a decade. Yeah. Um, we uh, grew up in the local music scene together, played a lot of shows together, had awesome house parties and uh, like the best times of our lives. And recently we, we got together with our friend Bobby, who was also in Andrew's old band. And we met Kevin, he was in a band with us prior to this band called Valentine Kills. And uh, we kind of all got together and pieces just fell off where they, where they did and then we yeah. out. That's what's up. We also wanted to change the style a little bit too. Cause like BK was kind of two different things. So we wanted to start something a little bit different. Yeah, it, it took a shape of, of, of its own, you know? Yeah. I respect the work that you guys been putting on the scene lately. Appreciate it. So um, what's the band's main influence? Like where do you oh, guys draw the influence from? I think it's all, we're all different. We all have different like opinions on what we influence ourselves by. I'm like big with like, like when we started this thing, like me and Kevin, when we had the idea to get a new project going, it was kind of like a trade. It was like a, a trade of Silverstein, Silverstein, that style of like uh, old metalcore music. Yeah, to, and then, to get that perfect blend, to get that perfect sound. Yeah, but everyone, like I said, everyone else has their own opinion of the style that they put into it. Is that, it, is that difficult at times to create music when no, everyone it actually, has a different dude, style? It's been, really, it's been smooth for us. Like we all put together very well. And like literally with BK, it took us a while to write a bunch of stuff because of certain members not helping with ideas with this band. Everyone literally has tons of ideas and you just put them all together. That's and it worked great. Bro. You you guys like, you guys are on a rocket ship. You guys blew up from the first single, the second, and then like the cover song, which was like icing on the cake. Yeah, you no, they did respect good. respect the hustle and grind from you guys. Thank you, yeah, yeah it did good. You guys, definitely, you guys definitely found the formula of what a local band should be, or strive yeah. to become a national band. Appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. That's one of the few songs we got. We kind of, we kind of lucked out on the COVID nineteen thing. Yeah, uh, I we that actually track some of our stuff. We were able to release it at a time where everybody was home and kind of bored and a little angry and anxious and just unknown, you know, with all the unknown going on. It was yeah, for us, a good time to release our first. Song. Everyone, everyone was home, so everyone got to listen to our song. Is it? Is it? Is it? Do nothing. Guys, release new songs. Go listen to it. Yeah, yeah, so it kind of helped. It definitely helped. Absolutely. But it wasn't. Is, is it difficult for you guys to like to to stay fresh? I, mean, I know it's hard to get together as a band. Do you guys find any difficulty? Well, or, like, the cool thing is we live together. Oh, uh, that's what's up. Band house so, or not? <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> so yeah. and like it's we get together and we, if we have ideas, we just sit down and go, oh, let's do this. Or, and then Robbie and Zuna live mad close too, so. They bring their masks on over and we jam out. Oh, okay. At least you guys are following protocol six feet apart. Yeah, right? yeah. We'll I'm, try. Not, I'm not trying to die. <laughs> so, what is your yeah. favorite part in this line of work and what's your least? Starting with Pikachu over here. 
Your favorite uh, part and your worst part. My favorite part is making the music, playing the music. Uh, the worst part is paying for things. Uh, <laughs> money sucks. Yeah, money does suck. Yeah. And uh, I guess loading gear in and out of places. Yeah. But that's not really a thing now because there's no shows probably for the one. Well, we did just do something really cool involving a music video and that oh, reminds me how much it's to bring the gear. By the way, it's okay. Aiden, everyone. But yeah, I agree with Kevin. It's the same thing for me. Like writing music and creating music and going to the studio is the best part. But like money, it's tough, man. It's just expensive, man. Artwork, uh, recording, mastering. It's a hole in your pocket. Gear, right? Promotion, promoting everything. It's it's crazy. Crazy. Facebook and everything sucks ass. You have to pay for ads. You know, like it sucks, but it's worth it in the end. Yeah. How about you? For me, um, honestly, I love the studio. The studio is the most fun for me. Um, I love working with who we work with in the studio. Um, and honestly, the whole collaboration of making music, creating music, and writing music is yeah. the most fun. Up next to playing shows, but that's just kind of out of the question for now. So um, I'd have to agree with them. The worst part really is like if you want to take it seriously, you know, you gotta you gotta invest in yourselves. Because if you're not yeah. gonna invest, in yourselves, who else is gonna, you know? And so you know, the money the money aspect is you know. When you're independent, it's it's tough, but it's worth it. Well, well, personally, in my opinion, you guys are definitely the flag holder of, of the local bands in the scene. I feel like you guys are spearheading you. everything right now. And right, you know, we've been doing it for, for a, a you know long time with other bands. Yeah, we finally got the knowledge and insight to kind of approach it the right way this time. And I like to think that it's kind of showing itself. That's exactly yeah, great stuff. So. Every band has an origin of their band name. You have Day to Remember, Devil Wears Prada, uh, you can even go from August Burns Red to Kill Switch Engage. How did you guys come up with the name? Awesome. So, there's this really dope anime called Sword Art Online. <laughs> and it, there's this badass chick and her name's Asuna. And it's, and it, and you gotta watch it. Most people who watch this might know what it is, but I think the name means like forever or like. A better tomorrow, a better tomorrow, or something like that. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. Off the top of my head, which but. is also cool. But, yeah, um, I I only just started watching the show, but it is it's it, badass. It's dope. I, I'm I'm not sure. If you like games and like MMORPGs and stuff like that, like this anime is top notch. So watch it. You gotta watch it. He's, wa he's watching Yu-Gi-Oh right now. Come on, and yeah. you know, you gotta put them on. You, you guys, <laughs> no, I'm gonna try to show them the way. You know, yeah. Really like Star Wars too. If you had no, I don't like Star Wars. Yeah, I'm a Lord of the Rings kind of guy. Not joking. I'm I, I, I can't. I can't rock with Lord of the Rings. The Force is not strong with this one. Uh, uh, whatever. Whatever. No one wants to <laughs> sit on trees and walk forever. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, the story. They, they <laughs> walk forever. You watch Clerks too. That will be your percent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> true. True. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Get on it. Well, um, where do you guys see the band? I know COVID has everything on a pause for everybody. It sucks. But where do you guys see the band in like the next five years? Oh, five years? Yeah, because COVID seems like the last of the entire 2020. It might have been last forever. Yeah, we're, not. Dude, we're going to be touring as soon as shows are available. Yeah, we're probably doing like two week runs every couple of months to start off. Like the whole Southeast. After East, we first Midwest. we have to play our first show. Yeah. Where I mean, would you like, play your first show out? Where do we want to? Or like, if you had, like, the opportunity to, like, set up your first show, like, where... I know it'd be, be for, like, me and Vin and, and Kevin, too, now. I feel like Poughkeepsie would be a really good spot to do it, just kind of our hometown or home base. It's a lot. It's a lot but I great. wouldn't be opposed to doing it somewhere else, starting fresh somewhere new and growing a scene somewhere else, because the scene's not where, like, it used to be. You know, it's not the same like it was 10 years not, ago. I agree, man. So, we go to and, back then we could sell 150 tickets no problem. Now it's like nobody wants to go out to shows. Everyone's grown up. You know we're still doing it, but people that used to do it with us aren't doing it anymore. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's kind of inspiring though. though. Like like I, like I said before, like I, I had a guest on on this show not too long ago, Kill the Blonde, and I mentioned you guys, and it's inspiring that you guys are still pushing forward to to chase those dreams. You know what I mean? Even though the, the, man, Kill the Blonde's great, dude. He's actually a former bass player of our previous band. Last band. So we're all we're all very tight, very proud they're, of each other. They're a great band. Yeah. Very proud of what they're doing. You see them hustling too. It's, the unity. It's, it's, it's really it's really big not to you know give up. I think consistency is very important in the music scene. It's so easy to just like let the real world tear you down. And, yeah. And give up, but if you really it definitely you know, hit, yeah. 
even if even if let's say you, it, it never reaches the potential you wish it would, at least you're fulfilling yourself, getting the things off your chest that you want to do, and creating something that you love. That's the top. Um, what I gotta say is, uh, well, this whole coronavirus thing, you know, we can't play shows, but I want this band to utilize. The time we have. The time we have to yeah. build up a following great enough so that when shows are at our disposal, we can hit the road it's and nice. at least 60 kids will be there just for us. Yeah. Yeah. That'd you be know, nice. I'm giving us a modest number. I'm saying, like, you know, every show at least will be a, a, a lump no, sum of people no, that yeah, But the, 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 the response from the band, like, what you guys put out and the response from it, I can definitely see that. The cool thing is, though, I feel like once shows start happening again, kids are going to come out because they have not been able to come out for a while. Sure. So yeah. somebody, they're gonna walk around and mosh and have some fun. That so, outlet, yeah, bro. I'll definitely be out there. I'll catch a show or two. Yeah, yeah. you better be. You better be. You have no excuse. I have no excuse. Sorry, dude. Sorry. Because <laughs> it's a new life. Seriously, he dyed his hair. Now he thinks he's calling the shots. That's all. Stan. Sorry. Stan. So. So what is the writing process? How, how do you do you guys write the melodies? You track guitar and then you put the melodies in your head. How, how do you guys go about writing? I usually, or Robbie and I usually hum out or think of some riff in our head. We go home and play it randomly. Then we show it to Andrew and try to humanize the whole idea. And then we kind of uh, meet halfway and agree on what riffs we use. We go to uh, Pasquarelle Recordings, Wappingers, and uh, all the magic happens as far as recording the songs go. So basically just a riff idea, show it to Andrew, come together, and then write some awesome vocals and uh, you know, lyrics over it. And of course we'll change it. Yeah, yeah we, <laughs> we all have our it. ideas, but that's mainly the process. Yeah. Yeah, it's totally. the best process. It, it's too hard to like write. I mean, it's not too hard we've done it. Yeah. But it's easier if we have ideas when we come to the table instead of creating the ideas at the table. You know, it's just, it's faster and easier. Yeah. No, no, so we, I like to write with the band organically because, like, if it's you know, say you go to the studio and you just go write a song, it's it's very programmed and black, yeah. and cut, you know, black and white. But when you can jam with your band, uh, you guys can vibe out and really feel the aura of what you're trying to create. So you, not only are you creating something that sounds good sonically, but you feel the music. So that's always a plus to try to write it at home. So, so how do you approach your songs lyrically? This question's aimed at you, like. Do you, yeah. do you take time to, to listen to the guitar? Do you get the feeling from the guitar? Absolutely. The I don't I don't rush the process unless, you know, we're, we're trying to hit a deadline for something because I personally believe writing is a big piece of piece of yourself. Absolutely. And I want to uh, emotionally be attached to the material. So we'll jam it and practice and I'll kind of freestyle it for a little while and start getting a feel for it. And then I'll write it and I'll rewrite it. And I kind of just try to generate a general uh, feeling and emotion of what I hear or feel with the song. Also, me and Robbie collaborate on a lot of things. Um, we um, we tend to have different ideas, which is nice because we you know, look at something a different way. And, yeah. Uh, like I heard it, but it gives it gives a little bit of uh, compare and contrast. And it, all, all, all in all, I mean, the material I feel like it speaks pretty well for itself. Um, yeah, it definitely it's definitely a nice process. I mean, is it? Is it like like on an average? How long did it take you to write your? You guys haven't finished the EP. Our first, our first single came to me really quick. I was coming off a really rough time in my life, and the song uh, really reflects that. Um, it's very the tree. Yeah, the tree the versus nothing is. Uh, it's actually the never ending story. <laughs> oh, nice! Really? There's uh there's um this movie called The Never Ending Story that came out when I was a kid that I really classic. Loved. In this in the story, uh, Trey is the main character. Basically, comes to find out that he's the only hope to save his, save his world, and this this black dark matter called nothing, which, which I attributed to my depression, my um, past addiction problems, and things like that. And it's like trying to swallow the world, and he's trying to he's trying to combat it and fight it. And, I don't know. It, it's very uh, it's very raw for me. It's very real for me. And, uh, Respect. That one's really easy. Respect. You guys, you guys, um, you guys have a sick and tired cover from Pulse Alone. What made you guys decide to cover that song? Did Post Malone? Post Malone? Say again? <laughs> I think he said Post Malone. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, no, it's Ian Post, Dior. Okay. Post Malone was the cover we did with Valentine Kill. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's, <laughs> yeah, it's not yeah the Machine Gun Kelly and Ian yeah, Dior. Yeah, yeah. That's my bad. Yeah. 
Yeah. So how'd you guys yeah. come up with that one? I think it was really Vinny. That was uh, or my idea. Was called. Well, the song's about quarantine. We were all kind of in quarantine. And uh, I don't know, I just personally identified the lyrics. We all, uh, at least, uh, you can't really speak for everyone, but I feel pretty confident in saying we all kind of respect the lane that MGK's in right now, and how he's kind of creating uh, True. And pop punk. Killing it. He's making uh, pop punk kind of cool and back into the mainstream again. And um, even though it's an Ian Dior song, a lot of us, including myself, didn't even know who Ian Dior was in that song. And I think it's cool that he's kind of building a whole subgenre around pop punk and rap now. We just want to pay a little homage to it, and we all like the song. No, it's a cool song. It's usually like during the quarantine. Say that? Yeah. Yeah, like it was like the whole vibe was just like. It's very relatable. Yeah. I'm sick of very, very relatable. So it, we, we related to it, for sure. That's what's up. So, what, what inspires you guys to keep pushing forward instead of calling it quits? What inspired you to see tomorrow Three. instead of instead of ending it today as a band? Like, do you guys face any type of struggles as a band? Do you guys, oh, this is not worth it anymore? Do you guys, like, what makes you guys push forward? Whatever makes it not worth it? <laughs> uh, I don't know, it's always worth it to me, honestly. Yeah, I, think it's, I think we all share the same dream and passion for it. Like, I'm sorry, who wouldn't want to visit the entire world? In, like, a, in a band with your best friends. It's like going on vacation. You know, while you're playing music in between going to the beach. Yeah, exactly. Six Flags or whatever. Seeing the world, like nobody gets to see the world. Most people are stuck in their house working nine to five every single day. Yeah, they can't trust me. I mean, I've been like stuck in my house playing Fortnite all day. We all have, dude. Nine Fortnite, to go, bro. Well, he does. Listen, dude, everyone's supposed yeah. to Fortnite. You better let me know. Fortnite guy. <laughs> right? No, I ain't trash. I ain't trash. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Shit. Going going back to your question though, for for me. Um, like, I kind of identify with these guys really well. I mean, we kind of have like a brotherhood and it's like a dream that we've shared and shared for, for years. years. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of like, I'm gonna, he's going to like this reference because I know he's a big Peter Pan fan. True. We're kind of like the Lost Boys, you know, like we refuse to grow up. Ah, <laughs> nice. Know? Of course, the, the world tells you that you got to grow up and stop with your dreams, but there's no, you know, even bands like Amity Push and touch on it. It's like when the dreamer dies, so goes the dream. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, but. Yeah. I'm not going down. If I'm going down, I'm going down swinging. Yeah. Respect, man. Respect. Life's about having fun, dude. Absolutely. You, you just can't look at the negative. You always got to keep pushing forward, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of negative in the world right now. So yeah, the world is music and they find you. I think music is like the answer for all this shit right now. Yeah, I'll tell you right now, if this band wasn't working, like we have to get right now during the last three months or four months, dude, I don't know what I would be doing right now. Like, yeah. my brain would be dropping. Like, with all this shit, with the whole. Black Lives Matter and coronavirus all coming together like that. Like, it's sad, man. Like, thank God music's here. That's how I feel. That's what's up. I mean, again, I want to thank you guys for giving me the honor to interview you guys and put you on my, my platform. And uh, I want to thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to extend your reach to other people that haven't heard of you guys before. Uh, thank you, bro. Thank you, yeah, yeah, we appreciate you, it. bro. This is your, this is your shit. Yeah. We appreciate you. All right, guys, this was Running With The Wall, and this is my showcasing with Asana. Again, thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you, bro. Absolutely, bro. Peace, man. Much love.